And so the first one I would like to jump to is our good friend, Nathan Dom. Uh, you know, those that have been around Oklahoma politics a long time are familiar with this guy. He is the state senator out of the Broken Arrow uh, area, um, renowned for its uh, really crazy electorate. Um, they were one of the ones that rolled out like 100 people to a meeting to protest about masks because clearly when you reside in a community that uh, – has a median income 30% higher than the state average, the only problem left in your life is to complain about having to wear a cloth face covering in a fucking pandemic. Um, so, you know, Nathan really is repping his peeps uh, to the best of his ability. Um, so he, he puts out on official Senate, Oklahoma State Senate L L Communications Division letterhead, a really bizarre uh, press release for some nonsense bill about how he's going to ban paper straws in the state of Oklahoma. I don't even want to get into straw discourse because who who really cares? I tried uh, to look up the math because he like mentions like how many trees have to suffer for paper straws. And I tried to look up that math and it is complicated. Like there's no, even like the Sahara Club is like, hmm, it's not that much. <laughs> like, yeah, I was we're, not, like, where... we're not sweating this. No. Yeah. So, I mean, again, like, you know, it's just culture war grievance, like, gets us mad about this thing over here instead of, like, the actual thing, like, climate change or just mm -hmm. the fucking fact that we've got, you know, how many billions of tons of plastic in the fucking oceans that maybe we should try to do something about it. But, you know, fuck all that. We're going to focus on paper straws. But in it, he goes on this thing to tag, to tee off on Joe Biden, uh, says... I've never met a single person who enjoys using a paper straw. So, you know, they got to put a little element of fact in there to kind of get you. Because it's like, yeah, you're right. Don't don't care for paper straws. I, I, we get it. That's why people use steel, but whatever. Uh, they fall apart and turn to mush quicker than Joe Biden trying to string together a coherent sentence. They collapse like Mitt Romney under the slightest amount of pressure. And even with Kamala Harris, Kamala Harris well, never mind. He goes how, on. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I just, I don't know how you, like, put out an official statement being like, well, never mind. Like, that's something that you, like, <laughs> do in an interview. Like, dude, do you know there's a backspace? You know, you can be like, just kidding. And, like, not put it. Like, I just I was, love that it's on Oklahoma State Senate Communications Division, <laughs> like, letterhead. Like, he, know. you know, he carried this in or emailed it over the comms person. It's like, I want you to put this on a paper and I want you to put it out to the media immediately because I am a dumb child and yeah. incapable of anything. Anyway, um, so, of course, you know, this was on – Thursday, probably late in the day, till it got till finally the poor intern was forced to hit the send button you know, on, <laughs> on the tweet. It's just like fuck my life. Uh, I don't get paid enough for this bullshit. Uh, so it went out, and of course it took took most of last Friday. That's why I don't think we if we talked about it, we didn't talk about much. And so then at three three twenty or three eighteen on last Friday, Dom doubles down because of course, what is you know this brain dead childish prick gonna do except double down i mean that's what he always does you don't know nothing about him you're in for a bad time i've been assured my jokes are hilarious your emotional opinions. who does that I who know. assures a white man that his jokes are funny nobody i know i i do not understand that i do not believe it and i mean there's an entire genre of political humor called dad jokes they're, you know, it's explicitly you're not funny. Like, yeah, we don't think and this is funny and we really wish you would stop doing it, dad. And yeah. he's not a dad. But anyway, um, so, yeah, it was weird, weird, weird. Um, and then I'm going to play this real quick. So fast forward to yesterday and the Reverend Dr. Lee Cooper of Prospect Baptist Church in Oklahoma City uh, gave the opening prayer uh, because we pray at all of our public meetings for the state Senate uh, because it was uh, Senator George Young's birthday. 
And this is what Pastor Cooper had to say. Everyone should have, after last week, stood up and said, no, we will not have this in our Senate. Cannot make statements about straws and sipping. Not only should that have come from the women senators in this chamber, but it should have come from everyone who heard it or heard about it should have deemed it wrong, Senator Dom. You, you don't have to take it back. It's still sexist. It's still, uh, it is still misogynistic. It is still, yeah, walk out. That's not the first time. Uh, it is still racist. Dr. Kerry. So, yeah delivering the indictment from the pulpit uh, of Senator Dom's comments. And of course, like a child, he walks out because he's not even man enough to, uh, which, you know, we can get into the weird sexism of, of the whole thing there too. But, um, you know, he's not even, he's, he's not even courageous enough. I shouldn't say man enough, courageous enough to stand up when confronted for his own words that he literally had printed on uh, Senate letterhead to go out. Well, and this like goes back to what we were talking about last week is that we're just not listening to black people. Like this is a clear evidence of not only is he not sitting there and like having a cordial discourse with this man, but he's just not listening. He's saying, no, I don't need to hear this. And it's like blatant that this is not a sign of like, no, I disagree with you. It's, it's pure disrespect and it's like pure your voice doesn't matter in this house, this house that is supposed to be built for the people, you know, this establishment that is meant to signif signify like people coming together, people making choices for the better of all, um, which of course we know that's never been what has actually happened in that building. But it's like, this is, this is a clear blatant, like, see, we, we're still not listening to black people in this community. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, I mean, uh, it, yeah, and, and so this becomes a recurring theme for the week, right, is, like, white people don't want to listen to any criticism of their actions or, uh, you know, behaviors or whatever uh, whatever it is that we're uh, trying to get at uh, as far as, like, root causes for why things uh, are the way they are. And uh, so, yeah, so... Yeah. there we talk, I talked about it a little bit on Wednesday, but, I mean... The only consequence I can see for Dom was that they removed him as the author on a few bills um, and then passed him anyway. So it's like, I mean, I guess that's a punishment. I don't know. I mean, you don't get to go back and say, like, I had my name on a piece of paper. But you can definitely say I was the original author and they passed my bill. Um, they just Girls removed. get in more trouble than this man did for wearing spaghetti straps to school. Oh, or for, or for not wearing a blazer to the state Senate, yeah. right? I mean, like, yeah. like, you'll get censured and told to, like, get off the floor and go put on a coat if you don't show up with the right clothing. But this guy can be a misogynistic, racist asshole and still get his shit passed in the law because, you know, welcome to America, I guess. 